only the greatest things come in trilogies, be it a book, a movie or a game. You don't have to go far to, to get an example. Dead Space, His Dark Matter is. That's why we are also making a trilogy out of this. Make it Bloom, Gloom, Glow, Doom tutorial. Hello guys, so that's the effect we'll be achieving today. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into this. Okay guys, so we run a very basic project. Uh, I have imported some models uh, from the um, preview package, uh, from the lightweight preview package, just to, to show you the, the example better. Okay, so let's start with creating some very basic scene. Of course, we create a cube, but change the, the mesh to be a hammer, because hammer looks more awesome. Let's make it bigger, because the mesh is quite small, as a matter of fact. Let's, let's reposition it. Okay, so we have, we've got a, a basic hammer, okay? Let's clone it a few times. Okay, so now the scene is ready. Right now what we do is we go, as obvious, to Package Manager and we search for Post Processing Stack. Post Processing Stack. We install it. I already installed it. And generally that's it. Uh, we now go to the camera, we add a we add a post processing layer and I've received a few questions about this uh, layer choosing uh, thing so generally when you choose everything or default uh, it is not that the it's not that the performance is uh, bad because Mm, the post processing is applied to every layer in the scene. It is applied to every layer in the scene, uh, notwithstanding what we choose here. But the point is, uh, we can put uh, post processing volumes and we can make them different layers so that this camera now will apply all the post-processing uh, sets at once, okay? So for example, I've made a, uh, sorry, nothing, and we choose, uh, I made a new layer called the glow, okay? And right now when I have this post-process volume, I put it on the glow layer. Now only this process volume will be applied. And if I clone it and put this one on, for example, I don't know, at layer, something so right now on the something layer it will be not applied to the scene okay so that's the only thing it's not that it will be selectively applied to those objects that are on uh, particular layers no it's it's bullocks unfortunately so right now we go to the post process volume we push this uh, useless new button we created a new we go and override it here because uh, we don't want to waste time on going into this profile and something and something. When we put the in intensity here, let's put it to one. Uh, I don't care. So right now the the last fee, uh, so everything is pre prepared. And uh, right now we are not using the uh, shader graph. So we are just creating a new material. We call it glow. And this material, let's make the color yellowish. And we go into this emission we check it, we make it red color, I guess, we can uh, increase the intensity, put it at two, and now, okay, so we apply the the material to all of our uh, hammers, but it's not glowing, yeah, I, I, I mean, I know it's not glowing, okay, so we go to our main uh, post-processing manager, let's call it, so the, the place we have this post-process volume applied, it can be anywhere, really. You can put it on the main camera object if you want to, but for the sake of uh, building, you know, viable hierarchy, it's uh, good to have a separate object for it. So we have two options. We can we can take this very misleading option, which is, is global. And as you can see, we apply the glow effect to all of our objects in the scene. That's uh, how it's uh, described. This volume profile will be applied to the whole scene. Actually, it's very misleading. The description is is not valid when it comes to to applying it to to objects. It is not that uh, this profile will be applied to the whole scene. 
it means that if camera is anywhere in the scene, the post process is applied if is global is uh, ticked. For example, let's tick it off and how to make it work. As we can see, uh, our game object is here, but camera is here. So when we go to our post processing game object, let's go and make a box collider here. And when we increase the, let's increase the size here. As you can see, now the main camera is inside this box collider. That's why the post processing effect, which is bloom, so the glowing effect is applied. If we move, somehow if we uh, indirectly move the camera outside of the collider, the effect is not applied. That's uh, how the is global thing is, uh, how, how the gl is global f option is really doing its job. It's like this. Okay, so we can see the effect. However, uh, there's a quite a new fun, new option. Uh, there's quite a useful option, which is called blend distance. So we can increase the blend distance. So as a matter of fact, we just create a new collider. So uh, just a second type of collider. So as you can see, we've got those. Uh, so the camera is here, right? And the middle of the post-processing object is here. And right now, the bloom will be applied depending on what's the distance between the camera and the collider. Okay. So only if the collider is, only if the camera is inside the collider, the full effect will be applied. So it's nice if you are creating a character that's moving with the camera. Okay. So it is going somewhere, encountering those uh, hammers, but it's going somewhere else. And now the hammers are on, uh, they are lit. Okay. But you don't want to make this a step change. You want to make the, the change seem seamless. <laughs> yeah, that's real comedy right here. So with this uh, nice accent, accent, so with this uh, little joke, we'll finish the, the video. So thank you for watching and remember always do your homework.